Welcome to the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast powered by Hiscox. I'm your host, Sanjay Parekh. Throughout my career, I've had side hustles, some of which have turned into real businesses. But first and foremost, I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. In the creator space, we hear plenty of advice on how to hustle harder and why you can sleep when you're dead. On this show, we ask new questions in hopes of getting new answers. Questions like, how can small businesses work smarter? How do you achieve balance between work and family? How can we redefine success in our businesses so that we don't burn out after year three? Every week, I sit down with business founders at various stages of their side hustle to small business journey. These entrepreneurs are pushing the envelope while keeping their values. Keep listening for conversation, context, and camaraderie. Monique Henderson founded Soulful Caterers six years ago. Her catering business, which is based near Annapolis, Maryland, is dedicated to serving delicious food for the body and for the soul. Here today to talk more about her business, how she balances work and family, and maybe even give us some tips on how to dish up food for a hungry crowd is Monique Henderson. Monique, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to talk to you because I'm hoping that we get some food tips near the end and, and making good food. But before we get there, Give us like 30 seconds about your background. I, I know I said a little bit about uh, you, but tell us how you got to the point that you are now. Okay. Uh, well, I am born and raised in uh, Washington, D.C. I live outside of that area. I have two children, and my children are the reason why I started Soul for Caters. Um, I have My son is 10, and so during his birthday parties, I would always cook and invite family over. And as he got older, um, I then had my daughter, and she's seven. But um, when she was little, more people started to come and everyone was like, oh, this was so good. And then people started to pay me to pay buy, you know, to make small dishes and things of that nature. So then came a side hustle and the side hustle <laughs> actually turned into me actually applying for EIN and things of that nature. And it became yeah. a business. So here I am. Entrepreneur. So you're like you're like an accidental entrepreneur, right? You yeah. just kind of fell into it. I just laid right down and, and started rolling. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you: Is this the first time that you've done something entrepreneurial, or did like did you do something as a kid? Um, was there some kind of experience before this that you were doing entrepreneurial? No, events? I never really thought about doing the entrepreneurial um, road. I was kind of always just maintaining. <laughs> Life was yeah. about maintaining yeah. and someone said, oh, you should just start selling your food. And it's like, really? Yeah. Well, I'm not a chef. <laughs> but and, and I've learned there's a lot of cooks out here that are not. And, you know, you have to have your niche when you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Where, did you have any uh, entrepreneurs in the family that you watched over time and saw what they were doing? Um, well, my grandfather and my mom did some things, but it wasn't really entrepreneur wise. It was more flea market. Let's go down to the flea market and sell some items. Um, outside of that, no, I don't. Know. Yeah, wow. So you, you're the trailblazer in the family. You're the like the the first entrepreneur, and, and yeah. maybe the hopefully not the last, right? Hopefully, there's more to come. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. After you. So okay, so um, you're you're cooking these meals uh, for the birthday parties. Um, and I feel like, I feel like that's a common story, but my mom used to make, uh, birthday cakes, uh, for us, uh, you know, for our birthdays as well. I, I had some pretty elaborate cakes, but she never went into a cake business or anything like that. Um, so you took that, that step. What was it that, that made you think like, yeah, you know what? Um, I, I can, I can start this as a side hustle and then, you know, then make that second leap of like, okay, it's not just a side hustle. It's a full-time thing. Like what were the things that caused you to think that? Um, the constant ask, um, the constant push. I have um, two really close friends, they're my best friends, that just kept pushing me and pushing me like, Mona, you can do it. I also have a nickname called Mona, but they would just push me and say, you can do it. Um, and it people just constantly ask. Uh, when, about two years prior to COVID, um, I, did, I just did a trial run of just selling dinners. And uh -huh. uh, it was out of my mind, the amount of requests that came through um, for orders that I ran out of things and I didn't have enough uh, people <laughs> available to deliver food and so forth. So that was a huge learning experience for myself. Yeah. 
how, how did you, for, for that, how did you get the word out? And then how did you take the orders? Social media. Um, and, you know, I'm not necessarily the social media site, to be honest, um, but I have friends that do. So when she tell one person, it just, the word of mouth just constantly just flows the information. And then we use some businesses um, such as uh, um, local colleges, um, their house, local hospital, and they're always looking for lunch. So in place, different places yeah. to go. So that was one of the um, suggestions that were provided to me. I can't say I did it myself, but someone suggested that I yeah. do that and it worked really well. Yeah. How did you, um, how did you deal with taking the orders and stuff? Was this just like People had to call you up on the phone, email, like how, how did you manage that? So it was a number of ways they could just stop by and uh, we had a table set up with uh, like a cookout style uh, where you can come and you can act, request what you like. I, when I was younger, I always participated in church activities and that's what I remembered then. Yeah. So I set my outside of my home up like that initially. And then um, there was, I'm also a project manager for a living. So um, planning is what I like to do. So I created this form where everyone can go out and they can just fill out this form on what you would like because we pre-planned the items we were going to have. Like you go to Popeye's, you know, it was on the menu, you order it. Um, you also have mobile ordering now. So it was very similar stuff. It wasn't mobile. It was online, submit an email, send in the cash app, whatever, and your order will be ready when you come. So I had someone printing yeah. items, keeping up with the items and bringing it down and making sure that we had it, that type of thing. <laughs> Yeah. So I think we just discovered the, the superpower that you have, which is being a project manager. Yeah. So you're able to like think through the project kind of from the beginning yeah. and know all the pieces that you needed. Um, was there anything that that surprised you or you didn't think about or realize uh, when you launched this? Like, yeah. you know, I, I assume you're pretty good about figuring it all out because you're a project manager, but sometimes you still get surprised. Like, what was that thing that surprised you? Absolutely. There's always these risks that you don't think of. Uh, again, it was the the capacity, the amount of people that came about and making sure I had the uh, manpower to sustain it. So it wasn't so much the on-site location. It was more of the call-ins and delivery because we offer delivery within a certain radius. And so while we requested right. to receive the orders in advance, we didn't always have... Um, those orders in advance and was still open to receiving them. So that was probably one of the things I did not think all the way through. So while, yeah, uh -huh. and then traffic, we're here in the Washington, D.C. area. So <laughs> <laughs> traffic would always uh, limit the number of drivers that we were um, having at that time. So, but it was a great experience. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you did that the first time and learned these things and you're like, uh oh, this is not all working. How did you, how did you mitigate that? How did you deal with it? Like the next iteration? I have not done that part again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you dealt with it. You're like, let's not do that yes. anymore. I'm actually working to um, open a, a food truck. Um, I, I think I prefer on-site locations. Uh, I don't want a storefront. Um, I do like going to my customers and I love setting up and catering and watching the faces unfold as they see the food unravel and they eat it. Like, that is like, one one of the most uh, warming gifts to me. Um, yeah. So doing home food, I'm okay with it. I love, I still set up birthday parties. We have Easter dinner here. But when I think about business, I like the on-site, not so much storefront, but actually having a food truck is my goal. Um, and, yeah. you know, that will bring customers. I can also social media, share it on social media and things of that nature too. So that that's an interesting kind of a perspective that you have there. Because a lot of people that are doing food businesses, um, the food truck is their first step to eventually getting a storefront, like a, a regular retail location where people can come and eat and all that stuff. And you're specifically saying like, I don't want that. I, that's not what I want. My end goal is the food truck. Absolutely. Um, what, so is your perspective like that you, you're going to start with one food truck and then you're going to expand that and that it'll be like a, a fleet of food trucks? Like, how, how do you think about this business and expanding? It? Absolutely. Um, again, I'm a project manager, so I, I plan out some of these risks and having it on site 
you you have to deal with a lot in terms of just having manpower um, consistently when you're open during certain hours. I, I don't see myself being always in the food truck, but I do foresee, you know, I, I love fairs. I've always gone to them as a child. I take my kids to fairs and carnivals and things of that nature. So I, I see, I do do table vendoring at fairs and so forth now, but I do see myself being able to pull up in my food truck, whether it's a trailer or an actual um um, vehicle where we pull up and we already have food prepared and ready and customers are coming running up. So having that fleet where I can have um, staff on on hand to drive and take care of the mm-hmm. items that I need to. And in those instances, you don't need a huge manpower of, um, of employees available. In, in yeah. storefronts, you do daily and that's the overhead cost that I'm not willing to maintain over time. <laughs> that's right. my yeah. perspective. Yeah. Well, and and the other problem with having a storefront is that if somebody calls in sick, it falls to you to fill in, right? And yes. and that's like the tough thing Absolutely. in food businesses. Yeah. Whereas if you're doing food trucks, you can just not have that food truck out on the street, right? Like Yes. And as, well, you still have some precautions there because when you sign up, you're paying for it and it's, you know, your loss, but um I, it's what it's what's within my control, and I think that's a framework that I take from being a PM as well. If I do have people call out, I can replace one or two people, but if I have a whole staff that um, calls out for a restaurant, that's not easily replaceable in a couple of hours. Uh, and yeah. one person can maintain a food truck, you know, in, in that sense. So, right. So yeah. So when you made this this jump, um, were you working full time as a project manager and then yes, moved into am. this? Oh, you still are. So you're doing both. So this is not a full, this is a side hustle that's become a, a small business, a small business side hustle for yes, you now. We plan all of our activities. Uh, we're really um, busy in the summertime as well as uh-huh. during the holidays. So I do a lot of cooking on the weekend. A lot of cooking wow. on the weekend. Okay. I actually have Fridays off typically. I took off today, <laughs> uh, this afternoon for this, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll touch back on that in a minute. Um, but let me ask you, so when you, uh, kind of started this out, was there anything that concerned you, like worried you about, uh, being able to do this? And, and if so, like, how did you get over that, that feeling? Yes. Trust. That's one of the the hardest things to get over. I cannot say that I'm over it. Um, I, I do have a small network of people that um, it's like a motivation group that kind of pushes and share their hurdles as well. Um, trusting others that they'll be able to carry out my vision is one of the things that have been, it, it still is, it's really hard to push forth and keep the motivation up. Um, so mm-hmm. again, that what's within my control framework, uh, you know, I, I have partnered with someone where we solicit, I have started hiring on people to be able to be shoes, um, sous chefs. I can't always say that word, sous chefs, <laughs> um, to help me cook because that uh, one person cooking for hundreds is a lot. Um, but somehow I maintain and, and able to do it, but we, um, getting through that trust is hard, but training up front making sure that I'm planning and preparing and writing down information for um, my employees as well as we're catering events specifically, not so much festivals and carnival, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there, uh, like, is it, so it's, it's you in the business and how many people do you have kind of around you that, that help total? Um, on any given event, I have a minimum of four to five um, okay. five is just extra, you know, you always need a dishwasher. <laughs> so you, you, that's, <laughs> that's one of my hurdles. You know, I love to cook, but the cleanup part, <laughs> um, <laughs> interesting enough. I mean, I, I don't know if you want me to cover it now, but we are, I, I, I am looking to outsource, uh, some of the cleaning functions of my company when I have big events, um, because we yeah. do rent, look, we, we do rent currently the, um, uh, locations for kitchen. And a lot of times we come, we are licensed and insured. So we will come to your location to cook as well, um, in that kitchen. So. Okay. So you're using, um, like one of these like contract kitchens, yes. um, a lot of times. Okay. Well, yes. Uh, it, as needed. Um, it's really on site. So a lot of the events that I do do, um, have a location that has a kitchen available and we would just plan ahead, um, to, 
know what time we can get in and how much time we have. And based on that is the number of people that I need available in advance. Got it. Got it. As you see this business grow over time, do you think, um, yeah, I understand you don't want a storefront for people to come to, but would you get a location where you have your own kitchen that you can control and have access to 24 seven, or does that not make sense? It could. Um, I don't know which way it's all going to go eventually. If again, it's starting to pick up, but the food shop would yeah. be that kitchen. Um, I have already started investing in the equipment for the um, for the food truck, and you know I have the stove and equipment that I need. So um, it's just storage may be the concern if you know I'm not able to have enough storage inside of the actual food truck. Having a location for that could possibly be, um, but as of right now, I'm not looking to do it. Uh, 100% full time. Um, weekends is what I'm sticking to. If I need to take off my full time job um, for an event during the week, I have been able to, but that's not always my goal because um, I do have children as well <laughs> that I maintain. Right. So the weekends right. is that's business and they participate when they, where they can. They love it. My son is actually a salesman for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, it's, uh, I mean, free labor, come on. Right. And, and who can say, who says no to a kid, uh, when, when they're pitching you for business? Um, okay. So let's, let's talk about that. Like, how do you manage then, um, the stress and demands of, uh, of now a full-time job, a side bustle, side hustle, small business and family life? Like, how are you balancing these things? And th how do you think about how you spend time on each one? Well, how much time? I don't have the answer per se to that, but I do compartmentalize everything. Uh, again, uh -huh. I'm a project manager. I plan everything out. I, I, my kids are involved in sports. I don't tend to miss many of them. <laughs> I am usually there when I'm not. They tell me about it. Um, I do co-parent and their, their father is really good at supporting where I'm not able to. Um, so I'm thankful, very, very thankful for that. And I have a good support system that helps with, you know, when I'm not able to have the kids, they'll come in and watch them for me. They're getting older, so I, I don't really need as much of a babysitter. But if it's overnight, right. definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I compartmentalize everything. I have days that I do certain things. <laughs> and that day is strictly for that. You know, I have time frames where work is um, your typical um, nine to five. So after five, it's children. Um, I may do some business work then if I have to but I have to compartmentalize. Yeah. The the great thing about kids is like, you know, every year they get a little bit older and then they can help a little bit more. So at some point, maybe um, you've got some built-in employees that can then start help cooking. <laughs> Absolutely. And we, <laughs> Do yeah. they like to cook? My daughter is trying. My son loves to eat. I don't, he, he's, <laughs> I can't say he's a cooker just yet, but he might just to eat it. He's my taste tester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think I sympathize with your son uh, quite a bit there. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm good at the taste testing side, uh, maybe not at the, the making side. Um, so, uh, so how do you, uh, how do you think about like, um, other things in your day? Like, do you, um, have an exercise routine? Do you like meditate? Like, how do you think about like managing some of these other things that are kind of necessary, um, you know, to be a whole person and, and take time for yourself? Um, like, where do you fit that in in your day? Okay. I can't say that I exercise, um, but I do um, start and end my day with prayer. Um, I, I'm religious. And so in the morning, I just take a few moments just to think and reflect and be thankful for where I am. Um, I also, after doing that, I take a look at my notepad because I have to jot down everything <laughs> just to make sure that I'm staying on point with what I need to do from work to children. Um, and then I also, at the end of the day, that's where I put my notepad down, you know, I write, and my notes are in my phone. So I will, you know, jot down what I did not get to do the, that day. And then the next morning I'm following up and doing whatever tasks that I have for that day. And it's not always a lot on my list. Um, it's just making sure that I'm tackling the things that I need to. Um, I've even gone as far now, I share my children's schedule with them the night before. So that is off of mommy. <laughs> and they love it. They're like, well, mommy, we're supposed to do this today. And it helps me take it out of my mind so that they, they're reminding me. So they're learning. Yeah. They're little yeah, that's great. walking around. <laughs> they don't know it. <laughs> that, is, that is a great skill set to embed early. 
Um, and, and I think your kids are going to be thankful for that, uh, at some point in the future. Um, so I, al alongside of that, so you, you're carving out time for yourself in the, in the morning and, and evening. Um, do you, how do you think about sleep and, and other things like that? Like, do you have like a set bedtime every day? Like, are you making sure that you're getting, you know, however many hours of sleep every day to make sure that you're fresh because you're, you're juggling a lot of things, right? Mm -hmm. Kids, full-time job, side hustle, small business, like oh, there's a lot of things here. Yeah, um, typically I do get a good six to eight hours. Um, I had to start writing things out because when I did not, I'll be in the middle of the night just thinking through everything, planning, doing this, doing that. So I had to start writing it down. And um, so I I don't really miss much sleep, honestly, except for when it's time to, when I have big events and it's time to cook. So I spend a lot of nights yeah. in the kitchen at night um, prepping um, to make sure that I'm timely the next day. Um, I do everything pretty much fresh. So it's really coming right out the oven and onto the table once it's completed. So we'll make sure that we're renting locations or we're going to locations where that kitchen is accessible the night before. Yeah. So fortunately for you, um, like, you know, when that's coming, right? When th there's going to be a day where you're going to have to cut back on sleep because you've got to cook and, and all of those things. That, yeah. that doesn't come as a surprise, right? Not not typically, unless it's a last minute. I'll at least have a few days to prep for it. Um, I, I don't really um, gravitate to the last minute request if it's huge because it can be a, a mess. And I'm a planner by nature. So if I don't have a chance, <laughs> everyone knows me, if I don't have a chance to think through it, it's going to be a lot of questions coming your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's, I think that's tough for entrepreneurs too, because a lot of times those last minute deals can be a lot of money. Um, and so how do you, how do you say no to that? Like, is it just like, no, it's just not worth it. Like, how do you figure that out for yourself? Well, it, it's the value for me. You know, what value am I adding by crunching something together? Will I be able to deliver the taste that I want the customer to remember? Because if I take it, um, I might not be able to, because sometimes products aren't available. I, I'm, I don't have a storefront, so I don't have um, vendors delivering things to me. I have to actually go have a team or myself go and get the product. So if it's last minute, I have to depend on, um, say, Restaurant Depot to make sure that they have it in stock, that it is actually not a... Know, something old. I'm very, I'm not one of those that do like the Instacart and things. I like hands on looking at what I'm purchasing, making sure it's good. It's not expired, things of that nature. So last minute doesn't fit into yeah. that category all the time. Yeah. So you're prioritizing um, quality uh, over like revenue essentially, right? Like Absolutely. you want to make sure that, that the product you deliver is great. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's super smart too, right? Because if, if you're not providing a good product, revenue is not going to come. Word of mouth is not going to be there yes. um, when that happens. So let's let's um, switch gears a little bit and talk about, um, so you're a project manager. I am assuming you've done some of these things. Like what are some technologies or apps or systems that you've implemented um, that you'd recommend to other people? Like, hey, you should definitely, if you're thinking about starting something, you should definitely think about using this. Well, I, I encourage everyone to get a website. It's interesting. I am a PM, but I have not spent a lot of time on my website. You know, I kind of just stood it up and just put out a menu. I, I need to do that. Um, it's one of those things where it, I feel like it's coming. And it again, business just started picking up on its own um, after COVID. I, I didn't anticipate it. One minute I'm just resting with my children and it was coming in when it wanted to. And now it's just constant in a sense. So, um Website is definitely something whichever certain, you know engine you would like to use or that's comfortable for you that's um, user friendly you know use it because it helps with the tie into social media as well. Social media is something else also you can get that'll put your marketing out there. If you're a social media person, I am not, but if you're a social media person, you can get you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, or hire someone to do it. Um, Another technology, as I did mention earlier, that I do, I did do the forms. Um, so I created a form myself um, that was just a simple uh, Word document that I um, put onto a platform and it was able to, um, people was able to print it out and send it in, email it in, however, with what they would like for that meal. Um, forms is a great way to organize things. Uh, I love it. And if you yeah. have 
M365 is one of my favorite. It's actually one of the things I work with his, at work as well. But it has the functionality for like SharePoint and SharePoint lists and things. And it can actually pull information into a spreadsheet for you. Um, so that's one of the things that I would recommend, especially when you're looking at lots of orders. You can prioritize the yeah. orders based on that spreadsheet and what's on with the content that's on it. Right. A- any any secret tips about um because you're a project manager, like what's the secret tool that you're using to manage projects like this? Prioritization. Um, you have to know your priorities, you know, if timing. So some one of the th- things in my spreadsheet when I was doing the um, online orders was the time. So what time did they, that was the, I call it unique identifier or the driving, um, what a, uh, like the, the driving source. So the time was the first, and then it became the um, amount of, of the, the content of the order. So the time, if it, they needed at noon versus one, I wanted to make sure that theirs was done and out first. But then it was location. Um, again, that having that driver available was one of my hiccups initially, but that was also a driving force because even though the time may have been one, we probably had to have it done sooner because we had a 45 minute commute to get right. there. And that's in traffic. So know your priorities is what I would say. Know your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, so thinking back, um, so you've been doing this for about six years now. Um, and I think I already know one answer, uh, but thinking back, if you go back in time, is there something that you learned now that you'd be like, oh, you do differently back then? We know one is, is not taking uh, last minute orders that get delivered. <laughs> like w- what else is there that, um, you do differently? Uh, I think I would have continued to work on COVID. There were a lot of people that continued business through COVID, but I think I had a fear based on what was being shared through media. Um, you know, the sickness, we really did not understand what it was. There was a lot that did lose their life, um, for different reasons. And we still don't understand some of it other than it was COVID related. So I, I think I would have continued to some extent, but I was like, you know, insurance might go up, you know, anything could happen. It could be blamed on me. Right. You know, that those are liabilities that we don't think about. And I thought through all of them. And again, I guess that's the project manager and me, the risk. <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't willing to take it, but I think I would have done that um, more than what I did. Um, and another thing I would have ch- would change and never do again is um, the on-site ordering, um, setting up, you know, last minute, having orders come in. I I don't think I would do that again other than, you know, going to a festival where the food is already there. So deliveries, on-site orders, all of that at one, it's it's a lot. That's a a huge corporation (laughs) type of function that I wasn't prepared for. (laughs) Yeah. What what would you tell somebody else, um, somebody like you, that's thinking about launching a side hustle or, or, you know, making it a small business or, or taking this leap like you have and is, is still teetering on deciding whether to do it or not. Like, what would you tell that person? Just do it. It's a learning experience at the, at the minimum. Um, partner with someone. One of the things that was shared with me is get on social media and see what other groups are out there that's doing the same thing and learn from them. You know, you don't have to necessarily jump in and start speaking with a lot of them, but you can see the chats that's happening within those Facebook groups and things that may help you center your ideas and your niche to get going. Um, and then, or send questions, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because if you don't, you know, you're kind of just circling yourself around your own ideas and, you know, you may not ever get out of that circle uh, or, or cycle, if you want to call it that. So just do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, last question for you. And this is the, the super secret one. Uh, the, the special question I've been waiting for the whole episode. What's the one like cooking tip that people don't know that's easy, uh, or, or, you know, straightforward that they should always do to make their food taste better. Okay. To, well, it's really slow cooking. Oh my goodness. That slow cooking has the most mouth watering, watering experiences ever. Don't rush it. <laughs> Don't ever rush your food. Just let it slow because it has a mind of its own. It's going to do what it wants to do. If you just slow cook, whether it's in the oven, uh, I know the air fryer now cooks pretty fast, but um, you just put it in and just let it go. I love slow cookers as well. 
like um, your uh-huh. pot, crock pot, slow cookers, things of that nature. The, the seasonings that sit in um, during that time, just, I don't know, the <laughs> the experience is just really good, no matter what you put. It could just be basic seasonings or I think it's really great. Slow cooking. <laughs> So, so you're saying I'm messing up by using the microwave all the time. Oh, no, you're, you're dehydrating everything. <laughs> <laughs> I have a microwave, but I don't, I rarely use it unless I'm melting butter for a quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good, that's a great tip. Uh, and probably the reason why I am the food eater and not the food maker. <laughs> um, but if our listeners want to find and connect with you or order food, but not at the last minute, <laughs> Where can they find you? Um, soulfulcaters.com. That is where you can find me. My email as well as my menu is out there. You can send us an email or you can call. Uh, our number is out there as well on the website. Soulfulcaters.com. It's like you're full, F-U-L-L. So. That's awesome. Thanks for coming on, Monique. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Side Hustle to Small Business podcast, powered by Hiscox. To learn more about how Hiscox can help protect your small business through intelligent insurance solutions, visit hiscox.com. That's H-I-S-C-O-X dot com. And if you have a story you want to hear on this podcast, please visit hiscox.com slash share your story. I'm your host, Sanjay Pari. You can find me on Twitter at at Sanjay, that's S-A-N-J-A-Y, or on my website at sanjayparek.com.